So you wanna start 3D printing really big, but you don't wanna spend really big money. So in this video, we're gonna find out if this $470 3D printer can beat out this $1,100 3D printer. Let's find out. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. My name's Frank, and I have a pretty cool video for you guys today. Sitting behind me is the new Elegoo Neptune 3 Max FDM 3D printer and the Creality CRM4 3D printer. Now, these are two huge 3D printers, and they're great for building big props and cosplay. Case in point, this gigantic Nova helmet. Like, look at this thing. Now, being able to 3D print this big has been a really cool advancement in the hobby, but sometimes the really large 3D printers, like the M4 and even the CR10 Max over here, can be over $1,000. But recently, some companies have been taking a pretty big swing at those price points, like the Elegoo Neptune 3 Max, which is only $470. Now, I've been running both of these printers for quite a while now, and then we also have the addition of my CR10 Max over here, which I've had for upwards of two years now, and I wanna know, is this over $1,000 M4 really worth the price difference between the Neptune 3 Max, or should you just save your money and get two of these, almost three of them, for the price of the M4? So first off, I think we should take a look at the M4 here and talk about the features that Creality has added to it because the M4 is an upgrade over the CR10 Max. Now, spec-wise, the M4 is basically just a replacement for the Max. It has the same size build volume and roughly the same size footprint. Build volume-wise, the M4 is 450 by 450 by 470, or roughly 18 inches by 18 inches by like 22 inches tall. This is a massive build volume and one of the largest ones you can get on the market currently, and uh, it's pretty neat. The CR10 Max here, in my opinion, was almost perfect for the time it was produced. It is basically a Creality CR10S Pro V2, but bigger. It uh, sported some really nice um, strut braces. It had a Bowden tube style setup with a dual extruder gear. It had a BL touch leveling system, had a nice touch screen. It was fairly quiet, especially for the size. It was easy to work with and it, you know, it's a pretty big printer. In terms of the N4, they've gone and upgraded a couple things. It still has the support braces. It still has the build volume. They've added a much nicer touchscreen system that's actually kind of removable, so you can kind of hang this, you know, wherever you want if you ever put it in some type of enclosure. They've adjusted from a roller wheel style setup with belts to a linear rail system with adjustable tensioners. This is much more stable on the Max. They've gone and upgraded the bed. It is a removable flex plate. I didn't have any adhesion problems on this bed, um, but it's, you know, it's, it's very different from the bed that came on the Max. Now we've upgraded to a direct drive extruder system. This is their Sprite system with their own own CR touch as opposed to the old BL touch system on this. They give you really nice cable chain for cable management. Um, these are not printed. They are uh, actually injection molded. I was very much expecting them to be printed, but they are really nice. My only gripe was uh, with that is they didn't put it on the Y axis, which is arguably the one that probably needs it the most, but you could probably go and print that and get one made. Both the Max and the M4 have the filament runout sensor system, but the M4 now has a dual spool holder, which is kind of nice. Um, it doesn't have a dual extruder system, but you know, if you want to swap filament over, you can have one ready up there. However, they have ditched the SD card slot and upgraded to a USB slot. Um, this is the only one that works. I haven't used the type C yet. There is another USB plug over here on the side that doesn't read or register. So I'm not quite sure what that's to. Oh, another thing, the CR10 Max doesn't have a Z-Sync belt where the M4 does. It helps keep the uh, Z-axis screws in line with each other, which helps a lot. But honestly, aside from those two things, the M4 and the Max are pretty much the same thing. Around the time of its inception, the CR10 Max was a little over $1,000, and now the CR10 M4 is a little over $1,000. So it is just kind of a replacement for it with nothing being too substantially upgraded, just small quality of life things. Now let's talk about the actual print quality on the M4. Honestly, not bad. I started by pumping out just a little test bunny on it, and yeah, it's a little larry, but especially for the size of the printer, I'm not expecting really super fine detail and quality. You got a big 3D printer to print big, not small bunnies. The first print I sent on the M4 was this really low poly oddish planter, and it came out really good. It came out nice and smooth and consistent. Um, the adhesion was great. I liked the, the quality it came out. This was on Creality's uh, standard filament that they sent me. It, they change their filament boxes all the time, but it's Creality filament. It prints good. And I'm actually really happy with the quality of it. The bottom layer came out really smooth, and you know, hey, I printed what I wanted. So then I decided to move up a little bit and try to max out the build volume size and print this giant Nova helmet. 
However, it was my first failure. I did have a really massive layer shift and I still am not quite sure why, though the overhangs on it worked really well. It wasn't an adhesion problem because even when I caught this layer shift, it was still stuck to the bed. I think I was printing too fast for it and that was only 70 millimeters a second. So I figured that there was a really bad Y axis shift and something just got messed up from the speed. But instead of troubleshooting it, I just resent the print without adjusting a single thing and then it printed just fine. Um, so I'm really not quite sure what happened, but I did get the print out. Um, the supports came right off. This is more of a slicer thing, but the helmet printed. I actually printed it standing up like this and it really didn't get too wobbly or shifty. I printed this at 70 millimeters a second on the M4 and it came out really good. It took exactly one whole roll of filament, 999 grams, that's including supports, but this came out really good. Like that's really nice quality for the, uh, for the speed I was running it at and what I was trying to do. So I'm happy with this, it works. I had also gone and printed Thor's hammer in one piece standing up like that, but I being the dummy I am, I broke the handle when I was trying to pull it off. Um, but as far as the details on the hammer goes, it actually nailed everything pretty good. I still have to dig some supports out of there, but it came out really good. The quality of the prints is, it, it's acceptable. And then I finally printed some massive arc reactors on it. Um, I wanted to make some kind of fun wall decorations. So I printed this giant arc reactor on it. It's just the front cover and the quality of this came out really good. I did have a little bit of a layer shift at one point, but it's cause I bumped into the desk really hard. But again, nice, tall, easy, had really good uh, layer adhesion and I'm happy with it. I also printed a glow in the dark version that uh, if you're, you, hopefully there's like B-roll right here of you seeing this, but they came out really good. However, you might've noticed that I also printed very similar stuff on my CR10 Max. I wanted to see if the quality over the past two plus years has gotten better. And honestly, aside from some janky layer lines, and I, this was really bad quality filament, when I did the swap, it actually ended up coming out a lot nicer, but this Mjolnir was printed on the CR10 Max, and honestly, it came out pretty good. I'm happy with this, and it didn't break. I also printed an arc reactor, however, it did fall over and didn't finish. It was starting to get a little wobbly near the end, but as it was printing, it, the quality is pretty comparable to what the M4 produced. Honestly, the quality difference from the Max to the M4, not substantially better or worse. They kind of look like they came off the same printer. Um, so I'm not really so far blown away by the upgrades on the M4. Sure, cable management is cool. Sure, a new bed is cool. Sure, a new user interface is cool, but it's not producing any better prints than the Max was. I think over time as 3D printers evolve, either the price should come down with the features it already has, or there should be even more offered on the printer to justify the continued price point. And so far in this case, the jump from the Max to the M4, I'm really not seeing that big of a difference in a jump in quality to justify that price or that price coming down and we be, us being able to get a cheaper CR10 Max. But it prints, I haven't had any real issues with the M4, it's a good printer so far and it's huge. But what if there was an alternative option? This is the new Elegoo Neptune 3 Max. And while its X and Y dimensions are a little smaller than the M4 and the, Ma the CR10 Max, it is taller. Here's a little comparison of the build volume where the CR10 Max and the CR M4 are uh, 450 by 450. The Elegoo Neptune 3 Max is only 420 by 420. So you're losing 30 millimeters of uh, build volume on both sides but you are getting a 500 millimeter build height on the Max compared to the M4 and the CR10 Max, which only go up to 470. So you're getting 30 millimeters back on the height. So let's talk about the Neptune 3 Max's features. You have a pretty nice touch screen here that's removable with a good user interface. This way you can put it wherever you want. You have a nice removable PI spring sheet magnetic bed for popping off your prints. You have an SD card slot holder and a USB to hook it up to your computer. You have belt tensioner right here with a single um, belt but dual rails here. You have a direct drive system and a run out sense. I feel like, I feel like I've said, oh, Oh, it has all of the same features as the M4. Weird. It it does. It has exactly the same features as the CR10 M4. It actually has a couple extra. I know it's gonna sound stupid, but it has a little storage drawer here. And with this big of a uh, build volume and this big of a footprint, there was plenty of real estate on the M4 to add some type of uh, tool storage. A lot of people appreciate little things like this. No, it doesn't have the fancy cable management, but if that's the, uh, if that's the $600 plus price difference, Yikes. 
Now, while I haven't had any adhesion problems with the M4 over there on that new kind of smoother bed, it, it's been fine and sticky this whole time. Um, the PEI spring sheet on the Neptune 3 uh, Max, which is also on the Plus, which is also on the Pro, it's across the whole line of the Neptune 3. This bed is awesome. Now, I can easily go and get a new bed for the CRM4 over here, but I just turned this $1,100 3D printer into a $1,300 3D printer just to get it to have the same features as the Max. It has a reliable direct drive system. It has a filament runout sensor that did fail on me one time. The trigger didn't click one time during a print resume. And unfortunately, these are the results. It thought it was still printing when it wasn't. But again, I doubt that $600 plus price difference between these two is in a more reliable runout sensor on the M4 versus the Neptune 3 Max. Once I restarted that print with new filament, the Neptune 3 Max printed Mjolnir better than both the M4 and the CR10 Max. This thing looks great. The Oddish Planter on the Neptune 3 Max came out exactly the same as the one on the M4, if not a little bit better, but that could be uh, temperature settings and the filament I used. But the fact that the $470 3D printer was able to match the $1,100 printer, so far, not bad. And what about the giant Nova helmet? Well, what about it? It worked perfectly, and I had to stop the print halfway through to change the filament out, and the print resume function worked perfectly. You can see the change in filament clear as day there, and there's no layer separation or any type of layer shift here. It worked really nicely. And they both printed in about the same amount of time using about a roll of filament, and I'm happy with it. And for a comparison, here's the Mjolnir on the Neptune 3 Max and the Mjolnir on the M4, and they look the same. And the last prints I wanna show you that I got off the M4 are armor pieces. If you're buying a printer this big in the cosplay world, it's because you wanna be able to print large parts for armors and cosplay. And this is the VEC 3D Mark 85 Iron Man suit. And look at that. I was able to one shot the back and the chest on the Neptune 3 Max, no problem. The backplate did get a little Larry. This was over a five day print and I could have used more supports on it. I was trying to be a little stingy, that's my fault. But everything printed great and the chest plate printed even better. Like being able to one shot stuff this big reliably for under $500, that's, that's awesome. Now, I haven't thrown any big armor pieces at the M4 yet, and I don't really think I need to. Just seeing the quality comparison that the Neptune 3 Max is putting out in comparison to the M4, I mean, you can, guys can kind of already figure out where this video is going. I've also just gone and preheated the uh, Neptune 3 Max here, and the loudest thing on this printer right now is the uh, cooling fan right here on the side of the hot end. And it's really not that bad. No louder than most 3D printers on the market. As for auto homing, leveling, moving, all that fun stuff, it doesn't get any louder than the initial cooling fan that's you know making all the noise. Which I guess if you were really concerned about, you can go and swap it out for a silent like Noctua fan or whatever, but it's really not that bad. Now let's compare that to the M4, which is more than double its price. Okay, I'm hoping my microphone is picking up the noise coming from the Neptune 3 right now, so I'm gonna stay as quiet as possible and turn on the M4, and you should be able to hear a difference. The cooling fan on the M4 is now the loudest thing in this room, and I haven't even started preheating the printer yet. Oof. Don't know why that took so long to power down. Um, I, I, I can't sell you the M4. Let's be honest here, Creality used to be the cheap brand. Creality used to be the brand that it was a race to the bottom, they made the Ender 3, they hit that sub $200 price point, everybody got a 3D printer, and I think their, you know, their reputation started going back up through the roof. I just can't in good conscience recommend the M4 when something like the Neptune 3 Max exists. Now, this isn't a sponsored, hey, go buy the Elegoo uh, video. No, there are other options. There's the Anycubic Cobra Max. There's even the uh, the Creality CR6 Max, which is much cheaper than the M4 here, though a little bit smaller. I don't really know what they were thinking, making an over a $1,000 printer on the market currently, when their old $1,000 printer did the exact same thing. Maybe it's their name and brand nowadays, but Elegoo saw a hole in the market and took a shot. And this printer, this printer is awesome. 
awesome. You can buy two Neptune 3 Maxes and still have money left over for the price of the M4. I, it's not worth it. Now, I'm not saying the M4 is a bad printer. The CR10 Max wasn't a bad printer, and the upgrades they put on this thing are pretty cool. I do like them, and the Creality Cloud print thing, when you can get it to work, isn't too bad either. But it's just, it's too overpriced right now. For the features the M4 has, this should have been a 700-ish dollar 3D printer, and that would have been a much better comparison. Okay, 470 for the Neptune 3 Max. Its build volume is a little bit smaller than the M4. The M4 is 700 ish dollars that's great that would make this thing way more worth it but the price point that it's at right now no i just i can't i do appreciate creality sending it to me to test and there will be a dedicated review video on the m4 going on the second channel eventually but for now if you can grab it while it's in stock i know that has been a big problem with the neptune 3 maxes and the pluses they sell out super quickly but there's probably a reason for that because they're good machines so if you're trying to start 3d printing big stuff and you don't want to break the bank Elegoo delivered by far. Honestly, for ease of printing, I may eventually get rid of the Max and the M4 and just replace it with a couple more Neptunes because why not? It's reliable. This was like the third or fourth print I did on the Neptune 3 Max, and it was an over a five day print, and I didn't have to worry about it at all. I just kind of sent it. So that's pretty much gonna wrap up this video, guys. I hope you did find it helpful, and it helped guide you into making a smarter purchase. Um, like I said, there's nothing wrong with the M4. I just think it is massively overpriced right now, and there are better options on the market. So um, on top of the Neptune 3 Max, I will link a couple other printers down below that I still think are worth the price point for the size. But if you just want the absolute biggest 3d printer on the market right now that i think is good yeah the m4 is there maybe you can find a ucr 10 max but very seldom are you going to miss those extra 30 millimeters on the x and y um, just reposition the print or maybe scale it down a little bit it can go a long way if you have any comments questions concerns about anything you saw in the video please let me know down below by leaving a comment i read them all and i will do my best to respond to as many as possible and if you haven't already please consider subscribing to the channel i have tons of more videos coming out about all these awesome 3d printers printers that are in the garage, um, way more projects in work, and I would just love to be able to share them all with you guys. But that's going to be a wrap for this video. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching, and you have a good day.